Uh, ladies and gents, we're doing custom validation for ASP.NET for uh, Visual Studio validation. I'll give you links to that in the description of this uh, post on my website. Uh, just go ahead and click through the post in the description of the video. So we're doing something uh, custom. We're going to do validation in code behind. I'm going to show you how to do this both for regular text boxes uh, that we had to form and we're going to do custom validation for uh, for a grid view and edit mode. So let's start by with the easy stuff. Let's start with custom validation for text boxes in ASP.NET. We have a, uh, an add button that adds this information to a database. And we just want to make sure, for example, that uh, the text boxes aren't empty. So this code here adds the information in text boxes to the database. So we want to wrap that around in an if statement. So this would happen on, an, on the else event. So we start out by writing if a student's for, uh, first name that text, which is this text box here, then there's an a then statement, which is going to be an error message. And we're going to put an else here. And the truth is, this uh, whole statement of adding should go in the else clause. So we're going to cut it out and put it in the else clause. In the text box, if it's empty, we're going to say, I have an, uh, a label on the page that gives us a success message, but this in this instance we're going to use it as an error message. And it says that first name must have a value, and we could do the same thing for the last name text box. Else if the last name text box has empty values, we could again give an error message to the student added label. And it simply says last name must have a value, and remember that when you're outputting this message into a label, you could actually write HTML markup in this. And this uh, should work. Let's give it a run. And if we click this button here, it says first name must have a value. And if we click this again, it says last name must have a value. We put in last name. Then we get a message, student added successfully. Now we could do the same thing for uh, grid views in edit mode. We just have to write some code that's a bit more complicated. And the way we start is we go go to our pages code behind, which is here. We need to do this on the row updating event of our grid view. So this is grid view one, and we're looking for a row updating event. We'll first start by creating a variable for the row that we're actually editing. Dim row. Grid view one dot rows, and over here comes a parameter. In the parentheses e dot row index and e actually is referring to stored e as as the event of the grid view updating event arguments and uh, e dot row index it's part of its class row index is the row that we're actually editing so now we can get a handle on the index of the row that we're actually uh, editing now we should get the cell number of the column that we we are looking for to validate first column of course is zero second column is one which is student ID here and the third column is column number two so we have to keep that in mind so we need to validate column number two and column number three so we go to our code behind and we write the following code now in order to get a handle we can't just directly call the text box we need to do some type a C type conversion it converts one type of an object to another and the way we write it is as follows if C type in parentheses row dot cells and here we write the cell number in our case is three dot controls and the number of the control is zero because the first control within that cell comma text box and we'll close off the parentheses that text equals an empty string then we'll write a message box stating the following string it simply says first name must have a value and we could do the same thing for our last name text box which is going to be cell number four so we did the same thing with an else if statement I'm just going to copy it over and uh, paste it in here and instead of uh, three we'll write four I believe that's let's let's take a look this is zero one two and three so okay the first one had to be cell number two and the last and the second last name was three so we can't have those empty 
Let me go write a message box. This last thing must have a value. You don't have to use a message box. You could, you could put it in a label that has no text value initially, but you could put that text value to the code behind as an error display instead of a message box, but I'm using it for the simplicity. So let's give this a run and see if it works. And let's start editing one of the rows here. Let's empty out the, f the first name value and try to click update. And we get a message box that says first name must have a value. You know something? I completely forgot to write one piece of code. And that is to stop the row updating. Very important. Besides the error message, we need to make sure that the event was canceled. So the way to do it is E dot cancel equals true. And the same goes for if the last name was empty. So now let's give this a run. So now when we try to update a row that has an empty value either for the first name column or the last name column, it should, it should not update. You get a message, first name must have a value. Click on OK and it cancels, you see it doesn't update. Let's say we empty out both values, it doesn't even go to the second text box, uh, to, the second, uh, uh, to the second event, which is to check if the, the, the cell number three is empty because it bombed out on the first one and it just stopped it right there. If we put in a first name and click on update, get last name must have a value, this one and it's pretty much is able to determine very well what's going on. If we click on cancel, you see the name stays as it was before. But if we now edit, and if it's not empty, we just add an, a one, and we'll click on update, it should update fine. And let's do it again. We'll click on update, and everything works fine. So now I've taught you both validation for text boxes that we put in onto a page ourselves, and text boxes that appear in the edit mode of a grid view. Thanks so much for watching.